Grace and peace to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. Amen. Dear fellow recipients of God's grace, God's word for our further consideration this morning, for the words of our gospel lesson, please listen to that final verse once more. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. We have seen his glory, the glory he has as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. When I read this lesson last night, as the final lesson in our Lessons and Carols service, I paused after reading the first part of that verse, the word became flesh. And I did so to give a brief opportunity to ponder, to wonder over the miracle that is the Incarnation. Because how wonderful to know. How wonderful to know that the only begotten Son of God took on our flesh and blood. How beautiful to know the depth of His love for us That he doesn't remain cold and distant as he works our salvation, but comes right among us and dwells with us. Not as an angel or any other magnificent creature, but as true man, born of the Virgin Mary. This is God's gift. A gift we celebrate not just at Christmas, but throughout the year. The Word made flesh for us and for our salvation. John testifies about him in the Gospel, saying that he is full of grace and truth so that you may believe and have life in his name. And truly, how could you not? How could you not as you consider the glorious nature of this gift from God? The glory of God, glory of which Moses could only see part. Glory that was instead described to him in beautiful words as the Lord proclaimed his name. Glory whose unchecked radiance is too much for sinful man to see. That glory is on display in Jesus. And at Christmas you are invited to view it. Christmas takes us out of that crevice in the rock that hid Moses and brings us out to view the grace that reveals Jesus with power to be also true God. That Jesus is full of grace, John witnessed firsthand on many occasions. From the very start, John tells us that this is the case. At that first miracle in Cana, turning water into wine, John concludes his report by saying, Thus, Jesus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. But as Jesus had told Nathanael, he would see greater things than this. Indeed, turning water into wine almost seems mundane as we begin to consider the list of other things that are reported. The disciples would see Jesus open the eyes of the blind by rubbing some mud on their eyes. They would see him stick his thumbs in the ears of a deaf man, pull them out, say, be open, and now that man could hear. They'd see him look at paralyzed people and tell them, get up and walk, and they would get up and walk away, praising God. They saw him drive out demons. They saw him heal the sick, no matter what the disease. They saw him walk on water. They saw him calming storms. They even saw him raise the dead. And as you read these eyewitness reports from John and his fellow gospel writers, you see his glory too. You see his glory revealed and you must ask the same 
awestruck question, what sort of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. But in our Gospel, John has already told you that this is no mere man. This is the Word made flesh who dwelled among us. And yet the miracles that I just listed are not even the height of His glorious grace shining through. For that, we must go to a hill outside Jerusalem. For there we witness the greatest miracle, the most powerful display of glory from the Word made flesh. For there, for the sin of the world, Jesus would hang on the cross. Willingly, He would bow His head to suffering and pain and death. For you, for me, indeed, for the whole world. And it's this glorious miracle that stands behind the promise made to you at your baptism. That stands behind the words of God's called servants as they proclaim His forgiveness to you. It's this miracle that stands behind the Lord's Supper as you receive the Word made flesh, given and poured out for your salvation. And thus the miracle of the Incarnation stands out all the more. Because all those other miracles are trapped in time, as it were. No one here tasted the water that was turned into wine. None of us tasted the bread and fish that were multiplied for thousands. None of us have had the Savior speak our illness away with a word. None of us have seen our Savior walk up in the middle of a funeral and raise the dead person back to life. But this miracle, the incarnation, comes down through the ages bringing forgiveness to sinners. To all who believe in Jesus, the Word made flesh, who came to live, to die, and rise again for our forgiveness. How glorious. How glorious to see the Word made flesh exemplify that description of God's name which Moses heard in our first lesson. Everything that the Father is, we see in His Son who is the exact imprint of the divine nature. And yet we don't just see miracles. We also hear it in His many teachings. For He is not just full of grace in His actions, He is full of truth. And there also we we stand back in awe with the disciples and the crowds wondering, where did He get this wisdom? as He teaches with authority and power. With the disciples, we watch our rabbi, the Word made flesh, answer even the most difficult of questions with ease and beauty and truth. Whether they were brought to Him as a trap or were brought in sincerity, Jesus gave every question an answer resounding with truth. So beautiful and so powerful was his teaching that eventually those who wanted to trick him gave up and didn't dare to ask him any more questions. And yet with his disciples, we continue to delight in learning the truth from him. For the truth that is at the core of Jesus' teaching is this, that God loves you truth that Jesus shared with Nicodemus comes down to us together with that miracle on the cross of Calvary and the glory of the Word made flesh shines through all the more. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but has eternal life. And that truth as well, John has already told in the earlier verses of our Gospel lesson. In Christ, 
you receive the right to be a child of God. Not the chance, not the possibility, the right. All because the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. Many, if not all, of the gifts that we receive at Christmas time are temporary, no matter how beneficial or useful they may be. But this gift from God remains forever. And so generations before us have marveled at the Incarnation. Generations to come will marvel still. And we too at Christmas marvel. But don't stop there. Don't stare at this gift, as Luther might say, like a cow staring at a new piece of fence. Put your trust in Him who was made flesh, who came from the Father full of grace and truth to be your Savior. For this is God's glorious gift to you, now and forever. The Word became flesh. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.